Three people have been jailed after a man was attacked in a city centre assault. On the afternoon of the 22nd of March, two men were attacked by a group of people as they walked into a store in Humberstone Gate, Leicester. As the struggle continued outside in the street, one of the men sustained a wound to his neck before the group fled. The injured man received hospital treatment to the wound, which was caused by a machete type weapon. As part of an investigation into the incident in May, Three warrants were executed at separate addresses, resulting in the arrest of brothers Laquan and Markel Benjamin and a 17-year-old youth. The 21 and 18-year-olds from Rutland Street and Dover Street, Leicester, as well as the youth who cannot be named for legal reasons, were all charged with violent disorder, Section 18, GBH, and possession of an offensive weapon in a public place. Mr. Markle and the 17-year-old youth pleaded guilty to a Section 18 GBH and possession of an offensive weapon in public. The charge of violent disorder will lie on file. Laquan pleaded guilty to violent disorder, the Section 18 GBH and possession of an offensive weapon in a public place charges will lie on file. They were also sentenced at Leicester Crown Court to custodial sentences. Laquan was sentenced to three years and six months in prison. The youth was sentenced to three years and six months in the Young Offenders Institution. Markel was sentenced to two years and six months in the Young Offenders Institution. Detective Constable Robert Smith, who led this investigation, said, Our investigation uncovered a raft of evidence against these three, putting them firmly at the scene and being involved in this incident. CCTV was recovered from the area, which captured the incident and their escape. Along Along with other evidence such as local officers positively identifying two of them and the same clothing being recovered from an address which was seen to be worn by two of the defendants at the time of the attack. We were able to strengthen our investigation in bringing the case to court. Despite their convictions, they are fortunate for the injury conflicted was not a more serious one. A wound to the neck with such a weapon could easily have been a catastrophic consequence and a very different outcome. A dedicated team set up in the force, the violent and complex crime unit, continues to focus on preventing and tackling violent crime. The team works closely with Violent Reduction Network VRN and other partners and is supported by additional government funded aimed at addressing violent crime. This includes raising awareness of knife crime and providing advice and support to people concerned about knife crime. Gratius, violent and sadistic were the words used to describe one of the most brutal and horrifying attacks Huddersfield has seen in recent years. In an apparently motiveless and senseless attack, Mark Lambert, Liam Whitaker and Liam Hambrick chopped a man's leg off after they tailgate the car he was a passenger in and pounced on him as he arrived at his mum's home in Spinner's Close. It was just three weeks after Christmas that Mr Lambert, who was 34, and Mr Whitaker, who was 39, and Mr Hanbury went around the area that the man was staying in. A day later, on the 18th of January 2022, his screams alerted neighbours to the horrors of what he had been put through. It was said that a machete broke in the attack. It was just one of the weapons Mr Lambert, Mr Whitaker, and Mr Hanbury had took with them. They armed themselves with a machete, axe and a sledgehammer. It was said that the attack's motive was obscure, but it was still planned and premeditated. The trio then went to extreme lengths to corrupt their tracks, even burning the car they had travelled in, but they did not suspect that their victim could recognise them. After his screams alerted neighbours and the police were called, he named Mr Lambert as one of the attackers, but his plight was not over. Despite the fact they had been charged, and were not near the victim. What had happened to him had terrified him so much, he risked going to prison so he did not have to give evidence. At the sentencing hearing, Leeds Crown Court heard the man, who had had surgery to show his leg back on after it had been cut off below the knee, failed to turn up to the trial to give any evidence. The court heard that by the 28th of January 2022, when seen by an officer, the man said he was scared of the repercussions if he gave his account to the police. His Honour, Judge Tom Bayliss KC said, he seems to have been subject to intimidation and on the 6th of May, he gave a statement. In that statement, the court heard the man said he had heard rumours he would be killed if he gave evidence to court. On June the 6th, he gave a statement exonerating the defendants and failed to turn up to court that July 
and was arrested. He spent around two weeks in custody before giving evidence which exonerated them. The prosecution were ordered to treat him as a hostile witness. Judge Bayliss said he is paranoid and anxious and manifested itself as behaviour. The court heard about the defendant's seemingly normal background and family life. To anyone who did not know what he had done, Mr Hanbury seemed like a perfect family man with children and a long time partner. He was also a businessman. His background alongside Mr Whitaker's and Mr Lambert's make their offending all the more confusing and concerning. Ayaz Quasi mitigating for Mr Hambrick summarised a letter written by his partner of 17 years. He said, she speaks highly of his family dynamic, his love for his children and his focus in life. He has always demonstrated towards them children and speaks of activities he engages in and the well-being issues he attends to. The barrister said, she describes having known his criminal behaviour, how he is someone who has struggles. The court heard, at the time of his offending, he got up well up on his feet in terms of business. Benjamin Newton for Mr Lambert said the offending was wholly out of character for him. The court heard Mr Lambert had started his own business and it was quite clear he seemed to turn his life around after his last custodial sentence before this offence. Mr Newton said Mr Lambert is an attentive father and a sentence will have an effect on his children. Mr Whitaker represented himself and only spoke to confirm if the court had received his references. It was said that he had 29 previous offences for those including robbery, conspiracy to burgle, violent disorder and assaulting a constable. Mr Hanbury has 40 previous for 89 offences. His last was in 2021 for a road traffic management. He also has two previous convictions for ABH, common assault and battery, possession of an offensive weapon and production of cannabis. Mr Lambert has 43 convictions and his last was for burglary offence and he also had previous for GBH. It was said for the defendants that their violent convictions had taken place when they were younger. For Mr Lambert, Mr Newton said, As an adult, it's mostly dishonesty and production of cannabis. There is a very small spree of offending when he was 15. These offences include robbery. Mr Newton said, after a detention and training order, he did not commit another offence of violence. Mr Lambert of Rombry Shore, Bradford was found guilty of attempted murder following a trial which concluded in September last year. Mr Whitaker of Popular Wood Gardens in Bradford and Mr Hanbury of St Paul's Road in Shipley were both found guilty in a retrial which came to an end in December last year. They were all jailed for 30 years. They were told they must serve three quarters of that sentence in custody before going to the parole board who will determine if they are safe for release. Once released, they must serve five years on license. They were all concluded to be dangerous offenders. Mr Hanbury must also serve a consecutive 19 week sentence for possession of cannabis. Judge Bayliss said the offence of attempted murder was violent and bordering on sadistic and involved a number of weapons. He added, this was a carefully planned offence in which Hugh had a clear aim to kill the victim. Following the sentence, Detective Inspector Rob Stevens of West Yorkshire Police said, these three men inflicted dreadful injuries on their victim in what was a brutal assault which we and two juries believed was a clear attempt to commit murder. Their attack on the victim resulted in him suffering life-changing injuries and the savagery of their attack has been reflected in the very substantial sentences handed down by the courts. These men were swift tracked down and arrested in a comprehensive police investigation following the attack and I hope the victim can take some comfort in seeing these men jailed for such lengthy periods. Chief Superintendent Jim Griffiths, District Commander of Kirklees Police said, the very significant sentences given to these men make plain that those who think it's acceptable to carry weapons and also use them can expect to spend many years behind bars. I can also promise criminals that, as this case demonstrates, West Yorkshire Police will use every resource it has to hunt down and bring justice to those involved in serious violent offending. We continue to appeal to residents across Kirklees to contact the authorities if they have any information about knife crime or any serious organised crime. A man who spat in his ex-partner's face and went on a rampage in Cambridge, has been jailed for more than two years. Paul Stanford, who was 46, saw a woman in the Station Tavern pub 
in Station Square, Cambridge on February the 3rd. Mr. Stanford, who was subject to a restraining order, preventing him from contacting her, began to argue with her before spitting her in her face. Enraged, Mr. Stanford left the pub and began lashing out at some plant pots. He then left the area and walked into the path of a man in a nearby car park. When the man asked if he was okay, Mr. Stanford punched him in the face. Mr. Stanford briefly returned to the pub before storming off towards a nearby hotel where he pushed cups and glasses off the table. He then started shouting at another man and also punched him in the face. The man managed to push Mr. Stanford away and restrain him before security guards from a nearby shop came to assist. When the police arrived, Mr. Stanford racially abused one of the officers and threatened him. During the subsequent investigation, Mr. Stanford's ex-partner said he had also punched her in the face on December the 26th, another breach of his restraining order. Mr. Stanford of Daniels Close, Willingham, admitted three breaches of the restraining order, assault, causing actually body harm, five counts of assault by beating, racially aggravated harassment, a fray and common assault. He was jailed for 142 weeks at Peterborough Crown Court on Thursday the 4th of May. DC Matthew Lander said, Mr. Stanford's behaviour that day was completely unacceptable as he attacked his ex-partner and a random member of the public. Restraining orders are put in place to protect victims of crime from further trauma and the criminal justice system takes breaches very seriously. I'd like to thank the student officer, Lara Wichirli, for her significant contribution to this investigation, which has resulted in a custodial sentence.